Welcome to the Keto Donist Podcast with your host, Dr. Matt. We're here to explore the worlds of low carb and ketogenic diets, primal and paleo lifestyles, and oral and whole body health. We're taking the best information from the leading minds in health and wellness and making those worlds collide. This is the Keto Donist Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Key to Donis podcast. This is your host, Dr. Matthew Standridge. I am a practicing dentist here in Yates Center, Kansas. Hey, my wife is on. Hi, wife. Sorry, I'm uh, for those podcasters listening. I'm also streaming this live on IG. So getting back to the intro, practicing dentist here in Yates Center, Kansas, in the United States. I'm also... Uh, certified primal health coach. Uh, let's see, I've added a couple of certifications since then. Ah, we'll get into that later. So since the beginning of 2016, I've lost about 90 pounds, adopting a primal ketogenic lifestyle to help correct my metabolism, heal inflammatory issues, and improve mental clarity and cognition. So while this show is not meant to necessarily be seen as construed as specific medical advice, It's just after seeing the improvements in my health and my family's health, you know, I just wanted to become a sounding board. Um, The quality of life that we've seen through this diet and lifestyle, I just, I felt compelled to um, spread the message of healthy, real nutrition um, to my patients, my community, and you viewers on IG, you listeners on whatever pods streaming you listen to. So this show is also meant to track uh, my further weight loss to um, and increase health as well as help guide others to along their own path to better health and wellness. So if you're new to the show, I welcome you. Very glad you're here. Uh, This show is really meant to clear a lot of the confusion around the low carb health sphere, keto, paleo, primal lifestyles, all of that stuff. So You know, if you're kind of getting new all to this and you're just being inundated with uh, information, then that's really what this is about because I am not a zealot by any means. I am not a, you know, I'm pretty diet agnostic, really, because there's so many things that can work for different people. But I'm I'm about real actionable advice and that's that's what this is about. So you folks jumping on IG, Hello, recording a live podcast here. And so uh, if you have any questions, just just drop a line. And so for those of you who are regular listeners, I'm glad you're back. Really, it's the loyal listeners um, like you that are the backbone of this whole thing. It's you're the backbone of what we're trying to accomplish here. And really, that's to spread the message of healthy living and at the core of it, it's about reversing this epidemic of chronic disease that we're facing, especially when it comes to these quote unquote diabetes related diseases. And it's because of you good people that this show will continue to grow. And that's why I keep coming back. Myself being kind of an introvert and um, an introvert of sorts anyway. I I do pretty well with people, but at the same time, I need my time to recharge. But it's the folks that keep asking questions and keep coming back and keep being engaged is why I keep doing this. And so, but it's because of that, that we can't really let our foot off off the gas. There's so much misinformation being applied to us. And we'll talk about that in a little bit through um, when we talk about stuff like game changers and and everything like that so um it's really our duty to get the right information out and also to lead by example you know we can't just set on our laurels so if you haven't yet i call on you please share the show leave a five-star rating or written review it's through it's through these steps that we reach more people and make a bigger impact on on the world but i can't do it without your help so Without further ado, let's get into um, today's episode. Really going to be talking about two things, and it's and they're pretty opposite ends of the spectrum, really. We have talking a little bit about game changers because I keep getting questions asked about it. 
I'm not going to go into full depth because it's been talked about and debunked to death. And so there's better resources that I'm going to send you, send you to. I'll have it in the show notes. Um, but I will talk about it a little bit because I do get asked questions on it. And then on the other end of the spectrum is I'm actually going to be talking about a, a book review on the carnivore diet. Um, Dr. Sean Baker's um, book came out and uh, I have a few things to say about it, mostly good. So if, if you're wondering, uh, the TLDR is if you're interested, read it. But anyway, so first things first, kind of giving an update because I've been a little bit more absent with the podcast. I've been busy with social media, but in doing more videos and stuff like that. But today was a, uh, but as far as the podcast go, it's kind of taken a back seat with the teaching that I've been doing, um, the traveling and the speaking. Plus, you know, I have a full time busy practice. And so uh, keeping up with that and then also coaching through the Keto Gains boot camps. So it's been a wild ride this year. Um, to give you guys an a update, because I have had questions on it about my wife, Sarah Joy. So as you guys know, we've been trying to have another kid and it hasn't been working out for the last couple years. So this year we really started digging in on why, getting tested and all of that. And down the rabbit hole of tests, we found uh, on a, on a um, saline ultrasound, we found um, an abnormality of basically like a scar uh, healing of her C-section on the inside of her uterine wall. And um, that suggested that uh, why we weren't being able to conceive. And because we had our first daughter when I was at very, very unhealthy. <laughs> and um, we, had, we had her right away and beautiful pregnancy, no complications whatsoever um, before or after, except for that we had to have a C-section. So I say we, you know, it's just like we're pregnant. No, she's pregnant. I'm, I'm not anything. But like, um, but uh, getting back on track here. So <laughs> my, we, we, we found that on the uh, ultrasound. And so here we uh, are going. Uh, and so we go and get that repaired. And we, that happened in September. And then it turns out that they couldn't get to all of it. So this, this, uh, the scar created basically a formation, almost like a neural tube that was just not letting stuff clear. It was a physical abnormality. So questionable on if uh, it was letting stuff in, uh, letting eggs in, in implantation happen. And so, um, so we'll see. She goes back actually tomorrow she, for, for a follow-up, and we'll see if it's a good time to start trying again. Um, we'll admit it's been frustrating, especially since we've been doing everything right. Yeah, I still have about another 50 pounds I want to lose, um, but I'm enjoying the journey, and uh, like I said, I'm stronger and I'm more athletic than I've ever been, even at this extra 50 pounds. My blood pressure is awesome and stuff like that. So it's just frustrating to do everything that we need to do. And yet some freak abnormality may keep us from having more kids. So we'll see how it goes. Um, and another couple of updates. So I got my sports nutrition certification through ISSA. So that uh, with along with the uh, certified fitness trainer or personal trainer cert. Um, I'm now one of their uh, kind of recommended coaches through the ISSA, so that was cool. And then just a couple months ago, I passed the uh, Minnow Henselman's, his training certification. It used to be called the Bayesian Bodybuilding. And it that is a very, very good course, by the way. Very science-based, probably the most evidence-based course that I found. And so that was, that was really, really good. Very challenging, but worthwhile. Um, 
so yeah, that's that's what I've been up to now. I have, um, I still have a precision nutrition cert to get through, but we'll see if that happens. I don't know. I'm not really. Uh, the another cert is about the last thing on my list right now. Um, I am about to take on more um, uh, coaching clients, uh, one on ones. Um, if you're looking for group coaching and you're into keto, really recommend the Keto Gains Boot Camps over there. Um, so check that out if, if you're interested in that. I do more uh, more one-on-one -on -one and I just finished up with a few clients this, uh, this last month. And so I'm not looking just yet, but probably start of the 2020. Look, I could take on a, a few, just like two or three. So if you're interested in that, uh, email me at ketodonist at gmail.com. Um, so anyways, getting back, getting right into the show here. So everybody's been talking about Game Changers, and I've done a couple of videos giving my thoughts on it. But uh, <laughs> I keep getting more questions, and that's why I'm going to go into a little bit more detail, but I'm not going to talk about it a whole, whole lot because it's being debunked to death. Um, and it's one of those things that eventually, if we want it to go away, we just need to stop talking about it. So this is going to be my last my little hurrah into it and then I'm basically just not going to talk about it anymore. So, you know, a few things with that. The very first thing I'll talk about is, well, it's a very, very uh, slick done film. It's a highly produced film. And so on that, that, on that end, it's, it's, do it's doing something right. But I don't like the overall narration of it because you're 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 following this guy, and I'm not a huge MMA guy, so I'm not going to pretend like I know um, James Wilkes uh, and his uh, and his evolution through all this. But so, from my understanding, this film this film was shot in 2015, and I think uh, he. I think he adopted it back in 2000, or he, he didn't adopt this in 2015 because it, it follows him like he's just discovering. He has all these issues going on. He's holed up with his knees. And so it's playing like, it's following like it's real time. Like I'm just discovering this and I want to dive into this and all that stuff. And no, he had adopted the diet well before. He took this on so I, that right there just starts things off kind of disingenuous and it doesn't really get any better from there and so the whole point of this film is vegan propaganda um, it it doesn't it starts off and it doesn't talk about veganism everything's wrapped up in quote-unquote plant-based and because they don't want to just start start off the uh, movie by beating people over the head with veganism, even though by the end of it, it's 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 full bore veganism. And there's just a lot of misinformation, and there's a lot of stuff just like cowspiracy, what the health, uh, forks over knives, a lot of the studies that they promote um, showing meat is bad for us are epidemiologic studies. So on a very, very simplistic level, we're talking about they, they compare vegans who, or you know, plant eaters who typically are more health conscious anyway, and they compare that to meat eaters. Now this isn't, they aren't comparing to meat eaters who follow paleo and do CrossFit or, you know, um, are, belong to yoga centers and that type of stuff. They're, they're following meat eaters as the standard American diet. So not only is there meat, but there's highly processed carbs, high fat, um, and you guys who know my work know that I'm very against the high fat, high carb combo. And so 
they're also smokers, they're drinkers, all of that stuff. So, with that in mind, it's not necessarily comparing apples to apples, you know, right away. So whenever they talk about these studies, comparing meat eaters and they have uh, low, uh, higher rates of mortality, higher rates of cardiovascular disease, higher rates of cancers, know that they are comparing health conscious vegans to the standard American diet, which is crap, as we all know. And so, right, and that might, you might hear that being called like the healthy, healthy patient co-founder, healthy, healthy user co-founder, or healthy user bias. It goes by uh, different names, but it is basically a flaw in the control of these studies. And that's, that goes the same for blue zones as well. You keep hearing about blue zones. Well, a lot of these blue zones are vegan or vegetarian or pescatarian, and they're, uh, and so they're naturally more health conscious. They don't smoke, they don't drink. They also have better sense of community. Uh, a lot of these places have higher income. Um, and so these are all factors that play in to this whole, uh, into, into health, because human health is multifactorial um, and diet is one of those things right so you know i just i right from the get-go this this uh this documentary quote unquote documentary is pretty dang flawed you know and they and they make a bunch of just they they make a bunch of different claims like the strong man in there is talking about um like an ox you're built like an ox or, you know, as strong as an ox. Well, do you see what they eat? They eat grass, all that stuff. Well, they also are ruminants with like how many stomachs. <laughs> I mean, just that comparison is, is ridiculous. Or the gorilla, uh, talking about a gorilla. A gorilla will F you up, right? And it's like, well, okay. But you know what will F you up is a standard American person following the standard American diet with a gun or a weapon because we have evolved using tools. <laughs> and so it's just, it, the, they make all these, they make all these points and uh, try to correlate all this stuff. And it's, it, it falls flat, but to a person who's not really, doesn't really understand uh, epidemiology and the ins and outs of that, it can sound pretty convincing, especially when they say bold claims like in what the health they talked about, uh, what was it? Two, a serving of two eggs is as damaging to your health as um, a half pack of cigarettes or something like that. I forget exactly what it was, but it was something like that. And you know, I feed my daughter Hazel an egg or two every day. And so it's like, so to think that I am doing the harm of her as making a four-year-old smoke five or 10 cigarettes a day is asinine. And so, but that's, that's how this whole thing is built up. And, on, and I did a video on teeth, right? because they have some an a a anthropologists in there. They have like two out of all of anthropology that uh, we're talking about how our teeth are evidence of us being vegans, and that's simply not the case. Um, yes, we do not have sharp, omnivorous teeth. We do not have pointy, pointy fangs or canines that are designed to pierce, hide, rip and tear flesh that is that's absolutely true but here's the thing we don't we also don't have flat monoplane teeth like herbivores do we still have molars with cusps we still have bicuspids and all that stuff we have these teeth that interdigitate with each other and that is suggestive of us being as we've seen through our human history obligate omnivores okay we are omnivorous we yes we eat plants 
but we also eat animals and it's because and they don't even mention our evolution using fire being able to harness the power of fire or starting to develop and use tools there is a reason why humans became the apex predator of the planet and that is through the use of fire and tools that played a huge huge part and to just completely skip over that is asinine in my opinion so no these the fact that we don't we're missing sharp canine teeth or sharp fang teeth that pierce hide um the fact that we're missing that does not then lead us to that we are meant to eat only plants okay so i just want to talk about that right there um and then also we they do this stupid little blood test and uh they're talking about they're they're doing this blood test of these uh they take these i think it was nba athletes on this one that they did um they fed them plant-based burritos versus burrito with some meat in it and they spend their blood two hours later and the meat eater's blood was cloudy well yes um so here's a few things on that these folks when diving into their what's kind of crazy about it is when di diving into their diets these guys are professional athletes and when asked what they're eating they're eating popeyes every day they're eating you know standard american diet crap food and <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of interesting that um you know these high level athletes are just getting by on such garbage food but anyways and so they they compare one who's been vegetarian or vegan for a while they feed him plant-based uh a, a completely plant plant-based burrito and they feed these other guys um who've been stand following a standard american diet um meat uh burrito with pork or chicken or something like that and they spend their blood two hours later and it's cloudy well fat is transient meaning after you eat fat it is released into the bloodstream to go elsewhere that's that's normal physiology folks that and that doesn't mean that that's anything to write home about so they're simply showing what happens now it's 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 a good visual storytelling because while they don't come out and make the claim that this fat is clogging your arteries that's what it's leading us to believe that's what it's leading the average show to believe okay and so it's it's hard for me to to watch this stuff and so i did uh, my own test and there have been others who've done their own tests of well uh, that have been in this kind of low carb keto um camp for a while and they did the blood test and they spin it they have a big meat hearty breakfast or lunch or whatever then they spend their blood two hours after and it's clear and so i did that with myself i uh i had and actually i ate more that day than i usually do because i usually skip breakfast because i'm not hungry in the mornings and so i intermittent fast and I don't have my first meal till noon. But this day, I was like, you know what? We're really going to load up. So I had a three egg sausage cheese omelet for breakfast. And then for lunch, I went and I met a, I was meeting a sleep director of a regional hospital because we're going to be, I'm, we're treating, we're doing more treatments in my office of sleep apnea and screening for it and all that stuff and so i wanted i'm trying to make inroads with the local medical community and so there's a barbecue place um not too far from the hospital so i go to meet meet her uh for lunch and i order a pound of meat that's it uh, eight ounces of brisket eight ounces of pulled pork and that's what i have for lunch with some salt and pepper <laughs> that's about it 
And two hours later, I'm back at the office and I spin my blood down because I have a centrifuge at the office because I do uh, PRF and PRP therapies after surgeries and stuff. So, um, and sure enough, my, my blood was clear, just as clear as their, uh, their example in the film. Now, my theory on why that is, is because I've been low carb and keto for years and all that stuff. So I fat adapted. So because my body is used to using fat as fuel and it's upregulated the metabolic machinery to uh, transport that fat, clear that fat out of the blood, get it to where it needs to go. This is probably why it was, it was clear even after eating a pound of meat. And so it just kind of goes to show why, why these, you can't take these things on face value. Now I will fully admit, I still have another 50 pounds I want to lose, um, minimum, maybe even more, just depending on where my body composition is at in, um, after that 50 pounds. But we can't be taking these things on face value. Now, I don't care if people want to be vegan. I really, really don't. If you feel good on vegan and it works for you, then awesome. Keep doing it. Um, I don't really buy into sus the sustainability or the ethical reasons of veganism because monocrop cultures are not good for the environment and they destroy plenty of animal life. They destroy birds and rodents and critters like rabbits and coyotes and stuff like that. So it's not like this happy kumbaya, death-free way of food, uh, of having a food system. There's just as many creatures that die in a vegan, in a, in a vegan system. So I don't really buy into that. But that being said, if folks just want to live their life and eat plants, that's cool. I, I really don't care. But it's the propaganda and the spread of misinformation that I, I have a uh, real issue with. So I will, I'll, I'll, I'm going to forward, or I'll have in the show notes some other good rebuttals because I'm not going to spend too much time on it today. It, you know, Chris Kresser has been on the Joe Rogan podcast. That's like two and a half hours of debunking goodness. Um, Lane Norton, Bio Lane, I, he rubs me the wrong way on a lot of things, but he did a good, uh, pretty good debunking of it. Media, the folks over at Medium did a really good, like I think it's three part series on it so i'm going to link those in the show notes because if you really want to do a deep dive into it that's where you're going and i'm pretty much done talking about it at this point it's been done to death and i just want it to kind of go away so next up I'm going to be talking about the carnivore diet book by my buddy sean baker got to meet Sean a few times. I first met him at Low Carb USA a couple years ago and then met him again last uh, last year or this last year 2019 at Paleo FX and so that was uh, that was a lot of fun. He's, he's a good guy. He's he, you know he's a monster at like whatever 6'2 or 6'5 or whatever ridiculousness he's at but um but yeah he's he, he's a good really down-to-earth guy when you when you get to talk to him personally and so when i heard that he was coming out with this carnivore diet book i kind of scoffed at it at first because i'm like okay so you can fit that on one page basically one sentence eat meat drink water at the end how are you going to make an entire book around that but he actually does a really really good job so credit to Sean for that and so I'm not going to give the uh, give the whole details away about everything oh sorry my uh, my treadmill desk just stopped what the heck anyway so 
I got to give the uh, give the guy credit because he did he does a good uh, kind of history and background. His story is pretty interesting when it comes to carnivore. Um, I really like some of the historical cues and the uh, talking about the mineral deficiencies, the vitamin deficiencies that a lot of people are have concerns with um, when going carnivore and stuff like that and how to properly do a carnivore diet, how to modify it to your specific goals and everything. I even like that he brings up the protein energy ratio that's been proposed by Dr. Ted Naiman. Really, really like that. He gives some good resources and stuff like that. Um, the sustainability aspect of it, all of that stuff. So it's a pretty quick read. A uh, pretty easy read. It's only like 200 pages if you don't if you don't include the resources. Uh, but I I give it a, I give it two thumbs up. If you're interested in learning about it, I I think it's a good resource. That being said, I will I'll I will have days that I do carnivore just because of the simplicity of it. But I'm I don't follow follow carnivore. Um, that being said, where I where I really like the idea of it is as kind of the ultimate elimination diet. Paleo or keto has worked for a lot of folks um, in the form of an elimination diet because it gets a lot of it gets rid of the sugars, it gets rid of the grains. Those right there can be very inflammatory for folks, right? And so that's why. Um, that's why folks can have such profound success with that. Um, paleo, uh, some folks have inflammatory response to milks and dairies, cheeses and stuff like that. So, you know, that's an elimination diet of itself. Well, the, the carnivore diet is like the ultimate elimination diet, right? And because from a physiology standpoint, meat is a very very good source of nutrition lean beef is they talk about superfoods right well lean beef is almost as close to a superfood as you can get between the 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 protein and the bioavailability of that protein plus the minerals plus the vitamin b12 and stuff it is it's a great source of nutrition um same thing with like shellfish or organ meats those are those are nutritional powerhouses and if you're trying to lose weight or maintain weight you can just go with the leaner sources of these things and not as much fat but you know these are great great sources of nutrition and so that's where i see the carnivore diet being uh being very beneficial i i personally do not think everybody needs to stay there or everybody needs to needs to go carnivore i really don't um i really think from an ancestral health standpoint that we are omnivores now as for those of you who follow my work know i have an issue with the term paleo because what does that mean uh, depending on where your ancestors are from, what you know, the geography of them, how f close or far away they were from the equator, well, that that played heavily with what they were able to eat. You know, if you're closer to the equator, it's more summertime, springtime all year round. Yeah, you're going to have more access to fruits and vegetables, so they're going to naturally kind of have more of a plant-based diet. Um, further north you go the harsher the winters then you're not going to be you're not going to have a year-round supply of plant matter to eat so these these folks really relied on animal products and sometimes some part of the year were probably completely carnivorous at least to an extent so that's why I, me personally it's all about finding what's what's good for you now I will say that I have, I have, I've been ticking over more to the carnivore side. Um, plants that I used to not have a problem with, broccoli, spinach, cabbage, that type of stuff. I'm starting to get like some bloating issues and stuff like that. So I haven't fully eliminated them yet, and I like the taste of them. And they, they, 
help provide food bulk so I'm you know not hungry but I am playing around with going kind of um, um, going basically like 95 90 or 95 percent carnivore um, that and I have a lot of traveling coming up with speaking gigs and stuff like that um, this next year and so probably on my traveling I, I, for simplicity's sake I probably will just keep it carnivore on those days so or, or those weekends and stuff just so I can have my compliance a little bit better when traveling so because you know like I like I keep telling folks the the simpler you can make this stuff the better and some folks I will say there's a whole community of carnivores that have been doing you know uh, Sean's like three or four years into this but there are people um, that have been doing this over 10 years that have been strict carnivore and they're thriving so I don't think it's necessarily what everybody needs to do but I'm okay with folks giving it a try, using it as an elimination diet, and then kind of tapering in from there. And he actually even talks about that if you want to start bringing in foods again, how to do that. So that's, uh, we're at the 36 minute mark. I think that's pretty good for now. I um, did want to get into a little bit about the, um, there's a sensationalist headline that I saw by a dentist talking about how chocolate's good for your teeth. And when you go into the study, it's talking about, the, the study talks about cocoa, but it's also talking about coffees and teas and the polyphenols, how they can have a good benefit for our teeth. But I'm gonna save that for another episode because I wanna start keeping these under 40 minutes. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the show. I am back. Uh, a lot of a lot of fun things coming up. Like I said, got coaching, uh, some coaching spots opening for 2020. So if you're interested, email me at ketodonist at gmail.com. Also, the Keto Gains Boot Camps. Check those out, ketogainsbootcamps.com. Um, you know, kind of new year, new you type thing. So if you want to jump in, uh, feel free to do so. Um, also working on some online education platforms coming soon um kind of talking about the ancestral health the uh dental health and uh oral wellness type thing um go going to be going into the anthropology the growth and development why do we why do we grow up nowadays with crowded teeth and stuff like that misaligned teeth um what are what what's what diet is optimal for our oral health and wellness because I truly do believe that health health basically the the mouth is the window to the body um, the health of the body is the barometer you know if we're eating a diet that is the, that is breaking down say the enamel the enamel is the hardest organic stu structure that the that's created on the planet it's two and a half times stronger than bone harder than bone and so if we're eating a diet that's breaking that down then the past end effects of that, the downstream effects of that, it's like, well, you know, if you have tooth decay, for simplicity's sake, there's a good chance that you have heart decay or brain decay or liver decay. And so I, I truly do believe that, that, that uh, oral health is the, um, the, the window to all this. I think the Weston A. Price folks used to call um, cavities were the canary in the coal mine type thing that if we saw cavities we uh, that there were often other things going on as well Papa Randy how's it going buddy good to see you on here I like Papa Randy he's a good guy so anyway um, so that's that's where I'm coming up with or yeah, that's where my mind is out on this so I'm going to create some ebooks and some uh, kind of online learning platforms for that and in preliminary talks of a book um, like a full length book so um, stay tuned for that that's going to be an undertaking that I'm still trying to work out if I can actually make work or not but um, but yeah uh, that's going to be that's going to be what's new. So excited for 2020 and getting more podcasts out soon. Um, 
And of course, if you guys have any questions, if if you guys have any um, guests that you would like on the show, um, message me, email me at ketodentist at gmail.com and I'd be happy to reach out to them. I, but I have become particular on who I allow on the show because getting to take a peek backstage of this health and wellness, there's a lot of shysters out there and I've kind of been, dis I, I've been disillusioned of sorts. So I'm, I've become kind of particular on who I let into my little circle here. So anyways, you guys take care, have a great week and happy holidays. I want to try to get some more stuff out here in 2020. Until then, you guys take care and I will talk to you later. Peace.